Hey everybody, it's Caleb here again. As you can see, I've got my Y-axis motor mount plates done, but instead of making like three videos in a row that are focused solely on milling out a bunch of flat aluminum with holes in it, I decided it would be cooler to actually show them off, obviously, because I just made them. I'm kind of excited to talk about them, but also talk about a bunch of the other things and maybe some of the other decisions that I'm working with on this build. So first off, we'll look at these motor mount plates and check them out and shouldn't take too long and then look at some of the other stuff. Obviously, you can expect that these are going to look pretty close to the x-axis plate that you've already seen. Uh, we got some points for eccentric spacers or, and the wheels to go down there. We have some points for the wheels up here. Uh, we have a place for the y-axis motors and pulleys and a place for the extrusions. That's pretty much it. There's a couple extra holes optional up here for... Uh, if I actually uh, make up something for use for sweeping uh, the rail. Now, if you look at this one right here, I've kind of kind of haphazardly installed a bunch of the parts on it, including one of the motors, which is a 256 ounce inch holding torque motor. Uh, we got some of the belt pulleys and some of the steel V wheels, which I don't think I've actually mentioned that I use uh, that I, this project is using steel V wheels yet, but. Uh, if you're wondering, yeah, that's why the, I'm using a uh, hard coat anodized rail, and that's why that was important to me to get that. But yeah, these are the V wheels that I'm using are the ones from Inventables. They're a dual angular contact bearing that can handle like a huge amount of weight on them. I think like 100 or over 100 pounds or something they say on their page. But yeah, uh, really kind of cool. One other interesting fact about these end plates is it took about 37 minutes to mill out each one of them. So just thought that might be an interesting little factoid about these things. Now it might be self-explanatory, but if you didn't notice already, there's quite a deviation on these Y-axis uh, motor mount plates from the actual shape Oko 3. And basically, uh, as you can see, the extrusion points are back here and the motor is uh, up and actually or up front and over on the other side of the rail on a shape Oko 3 normally the x-axis rail is up front here and the motor is actually behind it uh, the reason I did this is well there's at least three or four reasons but uh, mostly it's just for uh, performance reasons uh, getting it so the the spindle is more uh, centered between the y-axis uh, wheels kind of like the x-carve um, but that's sort of how that all works, and I thought that was kind of an uh, important thing to mention. Speaking of deviations from the stock shape Oko 3, I guess that's going to be a theme of this video. Right here we've got some 9mm uh, GT2 belt, and that's what's going to go on the machine. So that's kind of cool. And then right here next to it we've got some of the 6mm uh, GT2 belt that I've had is used from the shape Oko 2 uh, before I upgraded it to an X-Carve. You can kind of see right there. It's not that much bigger, really, but it, it sure is, heck, away from it, it looks much bigger. Uh, when you stack it on top of each other, it's, it actually doesn't seem that much more impressive. I don't know, you can't barely see it, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Got a bunch of it off, at, I think, eBay or something, I can't remember. It looks like really good stuff, actually, so lucked out there. Could have been really crappy, but... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty boring, but thought I'd show it off because somebody might be interested to know what kind of belding I'm using. All right, so next up, we've got a bunch of parts that are going to be part of the Z-axis. Much like the Z-axis I built for my X-Carve, at the core of it is this uh, threaded rod, and I got this from Open Builds, and it, it's a four-start trapezoidal uh, threaded rod that's eight millimeters. Um, I think it it's like eight millimeters per revolution I think it go comes out as but it's really really fast it's really nice stuff I had to buy a 500 millimeter uh, length of it for what I'm going to do but yeah very very cool I guess I'll get that so it doesn't roll and next up I've got this uh, Delrin uh, lead nut for for the screw obviously and it's got kind of a little bit of an extra cool design it's got a uh, anti-backlash uh, adjustment and I don't know if that's actually going to be useful for the z-axis or not but i saw it and i was like well that that could be cool why don't i try it you know so i got one of those and the other or the last thing is these little bearings these are going to be the bearings that go at the ends um you know they just go on like that and th those also came from open builds and uh the cool thing about this is that Unlike the X-Carve, where I used the flange bearings that came with the Shapeoko 
2 and uh, X-Carve upper bearing plate. I thought it would be useful on this to have a more compact bearing, and open builds bearings are much more compact, as you can see. They don't have a flange, but that's okay. I'm going to just mill in an area for that. So that's those pretty simple things, but I thought it'd be interesting to show off those too. Next up are these limit switches that I'm going to be using. And honestly, to be perfectly uh, frank, I don't know if they'll actually work. I ended up deciding I wanted to try something like this because I have Hall effects on my X-Carb and I really like them. Unfortunately though, they're kind of a more industrial design and they've been impossible to buy new ones. I, I've never been able to find uh, anything that remotely resembled them. So it's always been a pain when people say, hey, what are you using for your limit switches? I've never been able to say, yeah, I, I use this. So I don't know, they, they're pretty nice. They have a little mounting point. They have a, a power LED and a little uh, you know, sensor LED uh, and the Hall effects is right off there. It has a mounting point. So I think they're going to be kind of cool, hopefully. Uh, if they aren't, they were only like 15 bucks for the three of them. So how can you go wrong with that? Anyways, that's that. Finally, we have my spindle, which is a Porter Cable 450. And it's very similar to the DW611, except for it just doesn't have a speed control. And it's black, which is kind of cool. As you can see, I've kind of got the, the top already taken off because I've ripped off all the electronics because... I'm going to be wiring up for my super pit, and I'm just kind of I'm waiting to do that until I get any farther along on that. Uh, also, I've got um, a mount from Inventables that I'm hoping to use on the machine. It's not going to have a lot of uh, Z-axis reach down to the table, so I'm probably going to have to build up, but that's kind of a, something I'll talk about later when we actually get to having the Z-axis working. I basically have designed it so it will use the uh, Shape Oko 2 slash X-Carve standard width of these plates. So this will work, and also the, the universal plate that the X-Carve uh, and Shape Oko 2 before it had that was made of steel, and I have an extra one. So I can make up a mount for it and figure out a better way if this doesn't work. Uh, and also, I've got an eighth-inch collet here that I bought, which it comes with a quarter-inch collet. Uh, but you have to buy a special order one from some company. And there's a few different options. This one is one of the Eclair collets. Uh, and it's machined really nice. I really like the looks of it. I think it's going to do well. And it was only like 17 or $19, something like that. So I think it'll be the best of the three options where you have on the cheap end, you have like a $5 quarter inch to eighth inch sleeve adapter. And then you have this for like 20 bucks. And then you have very expensive precise bits collet. But anyways, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I can't think of anything right now, like in front of me that would be cool to show. So I, I think this video is long enough anyway. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to keep on following with uh, this project and how it's going. And if there's anything else that you've seen or you have a question about like you know hey what are you doing for this problem or isn't this a problem ask me a question in the comments below and i'll try to answer it the best i can uh anyways thanks for watching and bye